Hello everyone and welcome to The Public Space. Today we will be talking with the author and illustrator of The Seraph, which is now available on Kindle. It is a comics book. Uh, I've read it today. It is a comics book about a, a fight between two heroes, but they will tell us more about it. Uh, for this, we have Mark Brahman, who, who wrote the book, and Donald Kent, who worked on the illustration. How are you doing, guys? Uh, oh, please, Don. <laughs> Very good. I'm just uh, really happy to be here. Big fan of your show, JF. All right. And Mark Brahman, how are you doing? Uh, likewise, big fan of your show. Um, so happy to be here. Mm. All right. So what was the motivation behind this book? It's a book f filled with memes. Uh, it's like I have the impression that a 4chan user has been uh, writing a comics book. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, hopefully that's a good thing. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I usually But, don't um, use 4chan as an insult. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I actually don't, I don't think that I've ever spent any time on a 4chan forum, but, uh, I guess you do sort of pick up some of these things, uh, uh, just by interacting with the all right in general, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I, I understand that that's sort of the, uh, the cauldron of creation as it were, <laughs> these, mm. uh, okay. of these sometimes dubious memes. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, I, it's, I think it's kind of like, it's designed to a certain extent to uh, speak to the all right. But the alt-right is actually a very kind of historically is actually a very kind of important uh, counterculture. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, people say that it's kind of in a decline now. Uh, you know, I, I will see how true that ends up being. But um, it was at least and I think it probably will have a kind of little renaissance once it sort of um, uh, sort of reestablishes an identity and a kind of a new approach. Um, but it's a kind of important movement. So it would be natural to kind of like have, you know, in the, the same way Stan Lee would reference um, the 60s counterculture when he was making a comic in, you know, 1960 or, or 1970s, right? He would be making references to contemporary culture and also to um, countercultures that were um, existing during that time. And he does that very frequently in his work. So in that regard, I guess it's, it's not, It's similar from a Stan Lee comic. Um, but yeah, what did you think though? I mean, what did you think about the comic? Was it any, did it hold your attention? I mean, it's, it's, it's a little truncated because the story goes on. So it's kind of, it kind of uh, leaves you hanging a little bit. So I hate comic books to start with. Uh, <laughs> it's like, it's so childish. These things with heroes. It actually took me back to my time when I was seven years old and I was playing with GI Joes and I was like, I'm going to defend the world against you. No, you're not. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> uh, so this child, this, uh, that's why I, actually this may be the first uh, comics books I ever read in full. Uh, I, I never turned more than a page in a comics book. Uh, so I, I start with a bias against this, but I, I found it, uh, I found it that it was, Uh, welcoming to someone from the internet culture because you use all sorts of memes. Sometimes I, I feel that you, you misdirect people about memes, but I think it's, it's part of the joke. I think you reuse memes in other ways and someone who's aware of the memes can be connected and can say, Oh, oh, that's a joke about the meme. Uh, otherwise, yes, I've been, uh, I mean, I, I can understand how this generates suspense and I'd like to see the second part of course because it ends uh with the question of who's the bad guy who's the well what i call the bad guy uh, maybe a normie uh in that universe would find him the good guy is, is there a concept of bad guy and good guy or did you keep it on the fence uh, intentionally yeah well it's i mean it's not you know it's distinct uh art in general is distinct from uh propaganda right political propaganda so there's a kind of inherent deceptiveness to art so whether or not um the villain is a, i mean the, the villain is a villain in a kind of uh, basic way in the sense that he's committing violent acts against the government which obviously is not something that we would endorse or encourage and he, so he's not like a kind of role model as it, as it were uh but he is a kind of he's an interesting character and probably in ways that people won't expect as they continue reading the series 
right? So in other words, he's not, um, and it's not necessarily that he's going to become more humanized, but he, there are kind of layers or mysteries to that character as there are to all the characters that will appear in the comic. Um, Absolutely. I don't know if that answered. Yeah. That's what we want to know. Uh, where, where does he come from? Uh, so I'm showing here the first page of the, the book. Uh, we see that there are references to the yellow vest. Uh, the images are, are extremely well designed. Uh, Donald Kent, you, you draw this uh, on the computer. How does that work now? Well, I'm actually a, a traditionalist. I work with just all, you know, regular tools. I, I can do work uh, digitally, but I just feel it's, it's, it's very strange painting and drawing through glass. It, I want to really feel the materials. And my mentor worked for Marvel and DC for 35 years. So I kind of have a, a lot of techniques that people don't really use anymore. Um, but yeah, you know, comics are, it's, it's, it's interesting because you, you say like straight off the bat, I don't like comics. <laughs> so that's actually a good thing for us because it sort of shows and gives us an opportunity to say that comics are kind of the, you know, films on paper. So try to look at it from that perspective. It's just a different medium to tell a story. And the other thing is with the bias of comics is that people, they associate it with just one genre, for example, you know, like comics are about superheroes, but there's numerous movies that have been made from graphic novels, which are just extended comics. So there's, there's really quite a lot to unfold there. All right. So uh, in this story, uh, it, it's essentially a, a, an attempt to take over the government of the U.S. We see that from the very first few pages. And, uh, and for now it fails, but it, it seems like it's a battle to be repeated. Uh, Mark Bra Braman, was this the first comics you've ever done? Yeah, it, it is the first comic. And the other thing too is that I want to kind of sympathize with your sentiment in terms of, uh, not necessarily having been such a huge fan of, of comics. Uh, I mean, when I was young, I think there was a period when I liked comics, obviously. Um, but uh, I tended to like the uh, Robert E. Howard stories, the Conan the Barbarian, and was less sort of uh, attracted to the kind of costumed uh, comic book characters uh, of the Marvel universe, for example. Um, I, I have gained, I've actually gained a sort of latter day appreciation for comic books, having spent uh, like a pretty considerable amount of time uh, studying comic books, because they actually, as it turns out, um, especially comics developed in uh, Marvel and DC, end up being kind of these sort of heavily encoded works that in, uh, contain all kinds of sort of hidden themes that you wouldn't think to guess, you know, just on first appearance, you would think that it, it's a relatively kind of simple and even sort of vapid uh, genre that doesn't really contain much meaning. But uh, upon closer inspection, they're actually highly encoded works uh, that are parables effectively that contain uh, a, a, a ton of me meaning. And they not only, you know, I said that they, they were referencing uh, the counterculture uh, during the time that they were made. Um, you know, I'm talking about sort of the kind of the golden and silver age of comic books when Spider-Man and the Hulk were developed, all the kind of Marvel characters that we're familiar with. And so they're referencing in a kind of sophistic sophisticated way the counterculture that was contemporary to the development of those comics. Um, but they're also refer referencing like Greek mythology in a, in a highly sophisticated manner. Um, and, I, and I would even say that it's their kind of uh, referencing of myth is more sophisticated than uh, a guy like Robert E. Howard, who I really liked because of his kind of aesthetic and his sort of masculine style, as it were, and was drawn more to that. But um, so they uh, comic books are actually uh, kind of uh, a sort of underestimated genre in some ways. Mm -hmm. But it's also, uh, you know, but just sort of kind of the sort of you might say the kind of ethnic art that dominates our society today, whether it's in cinema or comic books. Um, so in other words, it's not unique to comic books. So cinema also uh, very commonly uh, contains a kind of similar messaging uh, that is kind of ethnic at its root, as it were. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's that's kind of would, would be my response to that. Yeah, I don't know from <laughs> first and look. Oh, go ahead, Donald. I just wanted to interject. As an art teacher, I've, I've taught uh, comics creation courses for years. And one thing I've always done is taught my students that superheroes are American mythology. I feel that in the kind of modern era, 
we've lost touch with, you know, maybe a hundred years ago, people were more literate about Greek and other forms of uh, Western mythology, but we're all sort of cut off from that uh, or, and or it's been replaced by modern media, cartoons, TV, movies, etc. And I, but I feel that, you know, that superheroes somehow carried over all those moralizing messages. There's, uh, you know, gods with great power and well, super, superheroes have the great power. So there's all those, all those connections. And I feel at the heart of what we're trying to do here is really to create uh, a new mythology and or to in, insert the alt-right's voice into the cultural landscape in that sense. Yeah, I haven't looked first and because I don't read these uh, comics, but my understanding based on news items I've been reading is that Marvel is slowly converting all of its comics to mm -hmm. include leftist language. Are you guys aware oh, yeah. of this? Oh my God, I can speak a great deal to that actually. Um, have you heard of Comicsgate? Uh, I, I heard the word, but when you put gate after a word, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> but uh, go ahead. Um, I'd like I'd like to be educated about it. You can you can make an assumption. You know, you've probably heard of Gamers Gate or Gamergate, yeah. etc. So uh, as we know, you know, Marvel, DC, uh, Disney, Warner Brothers are part of the globalist agenda, and they are slowly but surely, or maybe not so slow, but they're surely destroying our myths and demoralizing Western uh, culture through this. Uh, there's the R word there, the uh, uh, rhymes with refacement, you know, where the our, our people are being kind of uh, removed and, and re you know, not represented properly. And certainly uh, m men specifically, white men specifically, are, are very demoralized. Um, so this is where Comicsgate comes in. There's an enormous fan base. And we're talking millions of dollars worth of, of people and money that, you know, are disgusted with the direction that Marvel specifically has gone. And they've kind of pulled away from the whole thing. And then there's been just there's this enormous online culture of fighting back and forth and arguing back and forth about that. But the good news is that within the comic skate culture, there's a lot of enormous talent and they've been doing just fantastic in terms of doing crowdfunders, uh, I'm talking hundreds of thousands of dollars from fans to make comic books that are sort of remoralizing and reclaiming back all the things that we loved about it. So I think that regardless, we're not trying to be comic skate per se, but I think inevitably we're going to somehow be categorized within that context. So that's an important thing for your viewers to know. So without necessarily breaking the suspense for the next, because I assume this is just a first edition and there will be more following this. Do, do you know exactly how much you're going to release? Well, no, I mean, that's, that's kind of a question right now, because what we're doing is we're raising awareness of the comic. We need people to download it and buy it um, in sort of mass numbers, as it were, because I... Uh, uh, you know, uh, creating comics is not a, a cheap endeavor. It's uh, kind of resource intensive. It costs a lot of money. Um, and that money is goes to hiring Don as an artist and at a cut rate. I mean, he's he's working relatively cheaply for this project. That money goes into the Don's labor, but it also goes into the labor of other artists and include letterers. Um, it also includes um, colorists. And uh, I, Don actually is doing the inking on this, but you know, this is all kind of labor resource, as it were. And so effectively, it costs a lot of money to make comics. So we're doing uh, two things. We're selling the comic. We're making it available online for Amazon, uh, which, we, you know, to make back our money on it would require, you know, it to be downloaded in the thousands, right? So we need a lot of people to download the comic book. But we're also uh, setting up a Patreon account uh, so that people can support the work, right? And we, we also have a subscribe star uh, account as well. Um, but right now we're going with the Patreon and um, yeah, so we need a resource to continue, but we have it plotted out. We, we have the comic book uh, plotted out, um, you know, for several issues into the future uh, dealing with this Seraph character. But we also have like a kind of inexhaustible well of like all these really funny, cool ideas <laughs> that yeah. we could we could turn into comic books. And w I think would have a, a really kind of uh, fun and sort of moralizing effect on the alt-right as kind of a developing, you know, art scene as it were. 
mm-hmm. um, because I think that, um, you know, one thing, and even if this doesn't end up the kind of project that kicks it off, I think that at some point, um, we as a people, you know, speaking vaguely now, uh, have to kind of develop in a more sophisticated way as it, as it concerns uh, culture and propaganda. Uh, right now, we are purely in the realm of propaganda. Now, I argue that art, um, even religion and propaganda are all kind of ultimately the same thing, but they uh, but they differ in degree of sophistication and they differ also in degree of uh, effectiveness and influence and the power to sort of like affect people on a kind of deep level. And art and religion are forms that are able to kind of affect people on a deep level. And um, I, in, whereas propaganda, it's, you know, a lot of times you're preaching to the choir, right? You're, to, you're talking to people that are, are already converted, as it were. And you're talking in a very kind of plain way, in a very kind of plain and kind of confrontational way in a lot of ways. Uh, that is upsetting to people. So they are not interested in it. Um, so I think that ultimately we have to develop in this direction. Now, this is, you know, this project here is a bit of an experiment. It's a kind of, and it's a small, in the grand scheme of things, it's a small thing. Um, you know, again, it cost it cost a, a pretty penny to kind of put this together. But it, so this may not be kind of one of the sparks, one of the many sparks required to kind of set a sort of cultural revolution into motion. But I think that we also have to kind of be moving along this, you might even argue is a kind of almost more subterranean path, uh, but a deeper and more uh, kind of uh, subliminal um, path toward reclaiming a voice uh, that is kind of a less direct voice, but is also a kind of more enchanting voice um, that has a greater universal appeal. So this could be one of those sort of pebbles uh, in the pond, as it were. Absolutely, I agree. Uh, lots of people on my channel are often asking this about, you know, do you know any right-wing movies? And it's true that it's very rare, a, a right-wing movie made with the right-wing thinking. Uh, you can think of uh, even uh, even American History X is ultimately about uh, white identitarians, but it is not made by a white identitarian and we are left with uh, absolutely almost no art that comes from the right wing so i believe just like you that it's not this comics in itself that will do the job it's just a massive job that's ahead of us to to really start a culture and in terms of the narrative in terms of the thinking you're doing about this uh, where is this series added are you trying to use the memes of um, the superhero and and inject them with right wing thinking. Well, that's you know, I mean, that's sort of a mystery that people will discover. I mean, I, I can say generally, I mean, that we we are um, interested in kind of injecting our perspective, as it were, uh, in a kind of uh, a subtle and interesting and careful and complex way mm-hmm. into this world, so that people, uh, so that. Ideally, someone outside this world could look at the comic and be drawn into it um, because they're not, you know, they they relate to a character. Like, for example, they might relate to Seraph, for example. His uh, opponent, this character, Black Sun, is obviously way over the top, and he's openly a kind of na- a, a Nazi in the comic. Now, that he is kind of like, we just thought it would be fun to, like, start with Black Sun because he's... You know, he's he's just so over the top. And we thought that it might also be kind of, uh, you know, interesting to our audience. But there are kind of many villains and characters that he'll encounter that are kind of that are kind of more subtle in a way. And they actually might resemble to the extent that they're villains. They might kind of resemble more sort of stereotypical villains that we might have as, you know, members of loosely as members of the alt right. Um, So I, I guess to answer your question. I mean, part of the goal, I think, of an artist and uh, is to uh, draw people into a world and into a perspective. And I think it's almost in a way um, you're not dissimilar from uh, this, the uh, this sort of Greek god Mercury or Hermes in the sense that you're a soul guide. You're bringing someone into a world. You're guiding them into a world. And I think that this occurs in all art. You're kind of showing them a perspective. You're giving them kind of empathy for a perspective. Um, but I think that um, we also have to be sort of empathetic towards our audience and where they are coming from. Now, this this uh, comic itself, because it's produced by Mark Brahman, who's known as a person of the alt-right, 
uh, may have a kind of limited, lim limited reach in some way because of that. But it becomes also a way of sort of demonstrating ways to other artists who are perhaps less uh, connected to the alt-right, ways of conveying themes uh, less directly in a more subtle way that is still nevertheless moralizing. And then it becomes like sort of, you know, so in other words, we could imagine inspiring a filmmaker or a, another comic book writer who is kind of in a more a mainstream circle, but who is essentially doing the same thing because our, our work could also inhabit that space because it's told in a sort of kind of artistic, subtle and careful way that is not propagandistic, if that makes sense to you. All right. Now, if given, can, go ahead. I'm sorry, I just wanted to respond to what you were saying earlier. If we, um, how do I say, you were saying like, there's really not any right-wing movies and there's this kind of, uh, I think our movement is extremely hungry for for art and, and something that reflects us. We're, we're submerged in this leftist culture and we're constantly demoralized by it. But as I said, comics are the, I, I call them the poor men's filmmaking, you know, this, uh, film on paper. So if, if, if we really want these things, we, and if we want to trigger an art renaissance for our people, it really boils down to your listeners and people that we're reaching out to, to, you know, drop $2 and, and download a comic book and be part of something. It's more than just the literature. It's also that. So I feel like that's that's worth a, worth a chance, you know what I'm saying? And there's Absolutely. a lot of things going on right now. So, yeah, it, it is a kind of an up-and-coming movement, but it's happening, and I think it's extremely important that people in our movement get it on their radar, and we're obviously a part of that. Absolutely. We have a couple of reactions from the crowd. ID Van Booskirk, who has not been super chatting me for many months. I'm glad to see you back, ID, and says, uh, sending out a shout out. Great work. Tactical Boomerism sends 10 bucks. He says, Mark, have you seen the boys on Amazon? Good watch because it subverts modern superhero trope, jam packed with JEM. You and Richard would have a field day with it. <laughs> Yeah, no, I started, I actually mentioned that on a stream. I started to watch it. It started off really, I, I really like the beginning of it, but it kind of, uh, uh, you know, to use the common alt-right expression, it, it sort of got paused at some point <laughs> in a kind of dramatic way. Um, but uh, it does have, it begins in a kind of subver subversive way, I would agree. And uh, the, the premise, uh, just to tell the audience, the premise is that the superheroes are evil, right? You basically have these super evil superheroes. And you have these group, uh, these a uh, group of kind of rebels who are trying to kind of, you know, overthrow or unseat the superheroes, and they they don't have superhero powers, and so they're they're you know trying to kill them off basically, and uh, so it's got a really good premise, and and in the kind of like sort of current milieu, I, I think the artist is you know the artist is um uh, was is a non Jew, um uh, the original artist that created the comic book series. Um, so there is, it, it does feel a little bit subversive in the beginning because there's this idea of throwing over, uh, overthrowing a kind of established elite, right? So it's, there's something kind of inherently, um, subversive about it, but it's, uh, you know, it ends up being, uh, you know, I don't know how carefully it is, it is ultimately, I don't know how carefully coded, uh, the comic book is relative to say a Stan Lee comic, whether or not, uh, you know, it has some cool stuff that Stan Lee doesn't do at least stylistically. All right. Heidi Van Buskirk says, I totally disagree with the super chat person. The show, the boys is totally disgusting, not super hero mod and completely immoral. Just my opinion. So seems to agree with Mark. Tactical boomerism says, congrats on the comic. Any chance you'll write a long form academic style book on the Roman interpretation? Also, does AP trans post user post user submissions yeah no actually i'm i'm releasing four books on you know my writings which actually the first time i was on this show jf we discussed my website a little bit mm -hmm. um so i have four books coming out and uh ed dutton is uh, editing them and uh they're going to be great i mean it's going to be very interesting stuff but it's on it's sort of on the topics that we're discussing now uh in terms of um, you know introducing es essentially ethnic or racial themes uh, into the subtext of art and the importance of doing this, 
and kind of revealing that this is effectively that something has been going on, uh, you know, for for the whole scope of history, effectively, that, you know, these myths frequently have a kind of ethnic or racial subtext. And that's something that I discuss, you know, discuss in that writing. Very nice. Now you mentioned uh, being associated with the alt right and wanting to start a Patreon and your sell on Amazon. Uh, normally, I think that the fiction part has not been censored very much. And so, th do you think that you'll be protected? Be because we're still talking about a comics that includes a, a overtake of the U.S. government, uh, terrorism of some kind. Uh, do you think you'll be resisting censorship because it's a fiction? Well, I mean, first of all, the, the person who does that is a clear villain, right? Um, so, I mean, the, the work itself is actually arguably, on a, at least on a kind of face value level, it's no more subversive than, um, uh, you know, there was one where uh, the White House is, uh, there's a film, uh, a Hollywood film where the White House is attacked. I think it's called Olympus Has Fallen, right? Mm -hmm. So it, 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 contains a, it contains a scene similar to that. Um, so it's no more subversive than that. And uh, the Black Sun character is no more subversive than, uh, you know, characters appearing in American History X, for example. Right. Um, Washington's been attacked a million times in comic books as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. And look, I mean, it's not like, yeah. And yeah, so we relax a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And I, I actually I, I wrote a kind of tongue in cheek response mm -hmm. to that possibility, um, because basically anyone looking at that work would realize it's no more subversive, at least on a kind of face value level than anything else that's out there. Right. I mean, obviously, kind of, I'm sorry, that's kind of the strange beauty of art in a sense is it's, it's sort of a mirror in which you throw ideas. And of course it, it reflects reality selectively. So it's, a, it's just a, a seductive way of getting ideas across that are arguable rather than, you know, something you would go to court over, for example, it's art. Absolutely. Well, for now, I think that the fiction domain has not been subject to censorship, but we are always a, <laughs> I feel mm -hmm. like we're always a, on a small thread because even mm -hmm. Donald Trump right now has been announcing that he's going to meet companies. He's going to meet with uh, various technological companies to see what they can do about white nationalism, uh, mass shootings and stuff like this. So uh, we don't know where we're headed, but uh, I wish you guys good luck. And so for the people who want to uh, purchase the Seraph, the first uh, edition and the first, uh, I don't know how you call this, the, the first, uh, the, uh, how is it called? The first item the first, the first, issue. Yeah. The first the issue. issue yeah issue so it is on amazon and they can get it for free by joining um the kindle unlimited or they can get it for something like two dollar sixty canadian i guess that's one dollar ninety nine us so it's on mm -hmm. amazon and the link is in the description below and was there Thanks anything so what is there anything else you wanted to talk about tonight before i move on to the solo news Hmm. Uh, always... No, no, I think that, uh, uh, you know, thanks for having us on, man. Yeah, we're very appreciate good. it. Yeah, definitely. All and right. people, uh, uh, yeah, I would uh, just have people follow the links and, uh, you know, please support us. I mean, I, I think that this is something that has to occur. And if it doesn't happen now, it has to happen in general. So people have to be doing this. Absolutely. absolutely. And I have to say the the illustration of it is absolutely professional. Uh, it, it is high level drawing. I know because I've, I've been trying to draw my own faces like this. My God, this is <laughs> so much work and, and it is done in a very well, an seamless teacher. manner. Well, I'm an art teacher. Maybe I can help you. <laughs> yeah, because I wanted to develop a, a kind of illustrated version of the revolutionary phenotype. I would develop a fiction, mm -hmm. but I, I just abandoned because I was not good enough at drawing. Mm -hmm. Well, I did the uh, cover graphic for No White Guilt's uh, The After Party, so maybe you ah. can take a look at get a sense of my, my work. Wonderful. Well, I'll be looking at this. Donald Kent and Mark Brahman, thank you so much for being here tonight. All right, have a great night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.